How are we doing here? Okay, got it. We're live. Beautiful. Got it. Let me close this other tab. Okay. Hello, everybody. Hello, Eleni. Hi, Diana. Hi, everyone. It's like you've now become a really familiar face, I think. <laughs> That's good, right? <laughs> Need I really make an introduction? Um, well, just in case anybody watching hasn't seen Eleni before. Eleni is a, a current participant in School of Love's Inner Circle. So there are two groups, a group for single ladies, a group for women in relationships. Eleni came into the group for single women. We'll talk about what's developed since. Um, and, you know, Eleni, like, like a lot of the women coming into the group, bring their own expertise uh, and end up having... I think a really profound experience also because of that and the sharing of all the wise women in the group. So wise. Yeah. Um, and you've done so well at like taking the concepts and really embodying them and integrating them in your life so much so that I've asked you to come on as a support coach for the next round. And what I thought would be really special here today is for those of you who maybe haven't been watching Learning with Eleni episodes, where Eleni is so like graciously sharing about not everything she's learned in, in the program, but we've broken it down into three. Because there's so much. Yeah, there's so much. No way. I'd be on there for like hours. <laughs> I love it. So, so there, there's one more episode coming out of Learning with Eleni, but I've asked Eleni if she could also share um, just like really her, just like a regular participant what is her experience? What has shifted? It's, you know, just for anyone watching to really get a feel for what can be possible for them too. So thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Can you share with us a little bit, what was your intention coming into the inner circle? Like what were some of the goals or things you wanted to see come to life over the six months? Yeah, so... The, I think there were two big goals for me. One was the fact that I had already been dating. We started in March. So I had already been actively dating through the apps during the pandemic for about eight months. Um, and there was a lot of fun experiences and learning experience. And the beginning was just to get my feet wet again, because I was just scared to date again, start, you know, scared to put myself out there. But there were a lot of just first dates. And when the first dates showed some potential, they somehow always led to friendships. So it was this frustration of what am I doing? Not wrong, but is there something that I can be doing better? Because this is not why I'm dating, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not dating to be an endless dater. You know, I think somebody even called me like a, an expert dater. And I, I guess, you know, I understand what they meant. And I, right. I appreciated that. And I'm like, and it's not a title I want to aspire to for the rest of my life. <laughs> I don't want to be an expert dater. Um, and then the relationships were good, but and they taught me so much and were so expanding. And I even see that it was part of the process. But, you know, I also was like, I wasn't seeking male friends. I was seeking a partner. So the big thing was like, how do I get to the point where I can consistently have more dates with someone and it develop into a partnership versus a friendship only? And the other part, I think, was I, I started to develop a big curiosity around the masculine, the feminine, the difference between the mind and the body, always being in your head about how you're going about things versus being more intuitive and feeling. And I know you're so much about embodiment. And so those were the two big things that I came into the program with. Yeah, I love yeah. that. That's really good. What has kind of surprised you over this time about being like in this experience like something you've learned or unlearned whatever it might be that like you didn't really expect or that maybe deepened something you already knew that's a big question yeah I think I think the biggest I don't know if it's 
I would say it's a surprise and it's something that really got concrete recently was the fact that even as a coach, I hadn't made as much space for my negative emotions. Mm-hmm. Um, and that in this transition of leveling up as well, it's like the more you level up, the more your shadows come up. Mm-hmm. Because it's almost like, I'm not going to say this ultimate test, but it's, it's like, it's like you're detoxing what no longer serves you. And you would think that as progressing forward, it would get easier, but it's almost like the higher you go, the higher you have to overcome things. And it required a lot of just emotions that I was not expecting to feel. And at first I didn't really know if it was good or bad, but I what was so beautiful about the space that you've created was to just welcome and honor it in such a feminine way, which that in and of itself was a teaching for me because when emotions come up, I'm very analytical about them. Like, Oh, cool. Sadness is here. Let's see what it wants. (laughs) Right. What is there here to solve? Okay. We found it. Let's do all of the things. Okay. We've done it. Okay. Let's go. Let's, let's move onward. And what school of love has taught me is like, well, can we just honor however long they need to stay? And I think it's an essential part of growth in general, but it's also an essential part to do that work yourself because then you're not bringing that into your relationship necessarily. Yes. And they're both important, right? Like giving the space and then getting also like curious about the emotions and what needs to come next. And it's like, but we sometimes bypass the feeling to get to the curiosity and the solving exactly and and I think it's also like it's it's part of me just being a very optimistic person but it's also the you know I call it the growth junkie right like I want to grow and I want to get to the next level and it's like okay and honor the messy middle honor where you're in and you you won't know how long that takes and sometimes that's infuriating but I think that having the container between you and all the women and just like them honoring that and holding space. And it's almost as if, you know, sometimes you're going through this withdrawal and it's like your old tendencies come up and just the fact that you can write it like, okay, so I feel like doing something stupid that doesn't serve me. And you all be like, no, Lenny, like, you know, we got you, like you're, we're here for you. Let us remind you why this is not serving you. That whole process, it's almost like, you know, what's, what's the word, you know, like you're, you're, um, you know, when they take the demons out of you, like (laughs) exercise. Yeah. It it kind of felt like that to a certain, you know, it's like you have, you have the version of you that just has to sabotage you and you're like, no, get it out of me. (laughs) Guys are like holding me down and like, okay, I've gone through the wave and now I'm good. And this, this camaraderie, this group support changed that, you know, it really did. Yeah. And it it is, I'm learning as I go round through round that that is such a critical piece and it's really important who like we're curating and and bringing into the group because there's, there's something about our group that's so dynamic and so special and so profound. And because all the women are so wise in their own ways, right. And we all have our things to grow with myself included it's still so wise. It's like there is this deep, rich support that is so hard to convey, like to what extent it is powerful, even just to be witnessed, right? Just to be witnessed and held. And then where appropriate, like, remember Lenny, you wanted to proceed this way, right? So like holding you accountable yeah. to the, the way you want to be showing up and how you want to be experiencing your relationships. Can you tell us, okay, where do I want to go from here? Let's just get into the juicy stuff. So you met someone recently. Go in, in, sister. I met someone recently. Yeah, Maybe almost three months, two and a half months. Two and a half months. Yeah. Okay. Um, We're going to call him Mr. Slow Burn. Mr. Slow Burn. Yeah. 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 Do you want to tell us a little bit about how you met him? Like where you met him? Because I think that's an important piece um, just to give hope for others. Where you met him, how it felt at the beginning, how it's feeling now. And then we can like jump into some of the deeper learnings. 
Yeah. So um, I met him where I never thought I would meet him on an app. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, and I met him after also meeting somebody else on an app and feeling like, oh my God, this person's my person. And we all figured out very quickly that he wasn't. Yeah. And so I remember the time that I was swiping, I wasn't really expecting anything. And I was kind of like in this in-between stage. And we just started, we connected on like one of his prompts. We had a little back and forth for a few days. I enjoyed it. Um, and that was a point where I was also starting to practice being where we were, we established together like the sunrise. So I have the tendency to overshare, to like ask within the first date, like, so, hey, tell me about all your ex-partners, you know, what your <laughs> shadows are, <laughs> all of the things. What oh, your so shadows cool. are. <laughs> yeah, like, well, I don't use that terminology, you know, like, you know, what are you working on right now and all of these things and, you know, praise all the men who put up with me on those first dates and didn't flee the first time around, but um we were trying to do something different. You had recommend that I do something different. And so just like, even like in the texting, he would say like, let's reserve that for, for after. Right. So it's already, I was like, Oh, okay. I already see that there's something I could learn with this person. And so the first date was fun and uh, very like engaging and, and comical. And there was a nice back and forth and it didn't last too long. And we went for dinner and we ended it. He was a real gentleman. And right after the date, he messaged me and then he messaged me the day after and the day after, and then we planned a second date and we went on a second date and the second date was good, but the chemistry was a little bit different from the first date. But given that I really liked the chemistry of the first date, I said, well, maybe it was me, maybe it was him, maybe it was the ambiance, whatever. Like, I'm also trying to give a chance. Like, we were also saying like, okay, well, Eleni, let's not focus on the spark. And so then there was a little bit of a lag going up to the third date. And I was, it was really infuriating in many ways because I'm like, I'm trying to do the slow burn here and then there's like the universe just in incrementing space <laughs> to make it even slower like what's going on and long story short uh we ended up doing a date uh, at his place to watch a game and that's really when like he became comfortable and a lot of him came out and I was able to come out as well and it started like that's where our spark started and so you know there was flirting there was uh you know we kissed and all of these things and it felt good and it was exciting and yet I left and I come home and I felt super grounded I remember that yeah right almost to the point that it was like unexciting but like I enjoyed myself and I wasn't like <gasps> it was like yeah that was nice and I was like is this normal is this okay does this make sense um, and you're like, yes, yes, this is good. And I was like, okay, fine. I'll, I'll stick with it. And still showing up every day. How are you? Wishing you a good day, uh, checking in, making conversation. And then it was a fourth date. And then there was a fifth date. And then there was a sixth date. And now it's been two and a half months. Um, and it hasn't all been like, it's, it's not what I know to be the beginning of a relationship. Like we even, I, I even sent it, I, I sent you, I think a post the other week saying like, is it normal that I don't feel like I've gone through the honeymoon phase that I've just like gone <laughs> deep into like big conversations and relating on a conscious level and, you know, just everything being so mature up front. And you're like, yeah, that's just conscious love. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, it feels hard in many ways, just because there's such a consistent effort and presence, but not hard from the perspective that there's not an ease and a flow, just that it's creed, it's it's requiring us both showing up and, and really, yeah, holding space, showing up for the other person, right? Like sticking in the harder conversations. And like, I want to just make something clear when you say consistent effort and presence. It's almost like the way I 
no, I've witnessed it in your experience over the last two and a half months. It's more like that consistent effort and presence has been more with yourself and your patterns. Like, okay, I see my old stuff coming. I'm going to be present with this. I'm going to be, I'm going to move through this. I'm going to like, like totally witness it and like ride that wave and then come back (laughs) into something that feels grounded again. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a big part of it for sure. I think it's hard to kind of disassociate what's mine sometimes and what's ours Mm -hmm. as you are in that process. But I think that's also part of the big difference this time around Yeah, is that I'm not making it the responsibility of the man to be like, Hey, here's my crap. Can you take care of it for me? It's like, Ooh, here's my crap. What what part of it is mine to deal with and what part of it maybe I can let you in on so you can support me yeah in my growth yeah yeah it's like and like we talked about it like balancing the desire like this is what I desire maybe it's like I'm curious what you desire and like what can we create together so we both feel good and you guys have been having one honest conversation after another and and sometimes it's that way and sometimes it's not and what I think is really beautiful about watching your experience is that we assume like we assume like oh everything just always has to feel easy it's actually more like yes it can feel easeful Mm -hmm. right but when you're really being honest with yourself and each other and with each other the truth is you're going to move through different moments in the relationship some of them feel more fun some of them feel a little bit more uncomfortable but what I've seen especially like you and him do really well actually is the commitment to being honest with each other and like moving through a challenging conversation yeah yeah and I think that you know even I think it was after probably a month or so I remember telling you that I almost even had a hard time being more more forthcoming about certain things and we had a one-on-one about it as part of as part of the program Mm -hmm. and it was ironic because it was the first time that somebody matched my level of vulnerability and Mm -hmm. communication Mm -hmm. and that scared me because I was like oh here I am practicing being more gradual with it and this person's just coming in and like oh be honest and I'm like well I'm scared I'm just gonna bombard him with all of that and so I had a conversation about it and he stuck with it right and every time the funny part, which I've also shared with you, is every time I have it, somehow he kind of knows that I need to talk about it and the subject comes up. And it just, that's the easefulness. It's like, I don't have to overthink it. And so I've been showing up with a lot more intentionality from a body perspective, if that makes sense, to be like, okay, let me get out of your head choose what you want this next encounter to be like and just come with that energy and then surrender and see what comes up and it's like without fail everything that I want to talk about or I need to talk about somehow naturally comes to the surface yeah. and it's always game to listen to yeah. understand to apologize if need be and to finish as a team yeah yeah it's it's really it's really very beautiful and I would I think I would change the word of effort to just like, I feel like it's just raw, you know, and, and the rawness of, of all of these things coming up, they don't, they feel not heavy, but they, there's so much depth to it that it requires a different type of energy mm-hmm. and a different type of presence so that when you're in it, you're, it's all heightened. But then when you're done, it's like, whew, I just did like this little growth spurt with this person who I'm still getting to know. And it's still so soon, mm-hmm. right? But how wonderful to also have this now to lay a foundation, hoping that it leads to something better as well as just the appreciation, like constant appreciation. Thank you for this. Thank you for sharing. And fun too, like, right. For anybody who's watching, like there's, yeah, there's their conversations and there's moving through like, Oh, I'm feeling triggered. And I can tell you're feeling triggered. And let's talk about that. 
Um, and then there's also like just enjoying each other's company and, and, and having that piece to it too. I think one of the things that I've witnessed with you too is like where as so as a manifester and just like just your personality in general there's like a lot of initiating and, and excitement and enthusiasm and one of the things that we talked about from the very get-go is like well if you can lean into some more trust and leave even just a little bit more space then you give your partner space to then come to you and show up and also make some effort right versus like always being the one checking in or making plans or doing all the things. It's like even just a fraction of more space gives it breathing room for, for the person to show you how much they are ready to show up, right? Versus like, I know not just you, but many of the women, it's like there's this fear-based action taking, like I need to control or make something happen or it won't. Yeah. That's been huge watching that in you. What would you say, and we'll, we'll wrap it up soon. What would you say are some of the concepts you've taken from school of love? So anybody watching, like Lenny has been like dating online for a solid year, um, you know, even before school of love. And then now we're five months into the program. What would you say you've taken from these five months so far uh, and really done differently you've already said this in some ways um done differently in this experience with Mr. Slowburn so first and foremost like uh, we already established was the sunrise so as mm -hmm. opposed to just being like boom this is me is showing yeah. myself gradually mm -hmm. um also to reiterate the last thing you said is more of the way I see it in my mind is giving room for a man to be a man I say it in that way because I, I've associated my tendencies to want to organize and initiate and control more of like a masculine energy. So to be able to just give room and space for that and the space that they or that he wants in this case, because I'm not assuming that all men are like that, but the space that he wants to kind of like feel that pull in me, miss me a little bit more, mm -hmm. uh, initiate a bit more. Um, then there's also, there's so much around masculine and feminine energy for me. It's really trying to get out of my mind as much as possible. Even the amount of like mental energy that I attribute to thinking about someone like you taught us a good tr uh, trick, like, okay, just like, let's, let's put him on the shelf for right now. Cause I have to do to deal with these other things right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so like all these like mini visualizations um when i when i have something to resolve i used to be like okay let me write like the entire mm -hmm. paragraph of everything i want to say and like do bullet points and mm -hmm. <laughs> like i understand why our mind needs that especially when there's fear but there's also this sense of not only trusting yourself, but also trusting that the person in front of you has a good intention, mm -hmm. which if I can make like a very small side, like side note is that this weekend, it became really apparent to me how I was still leaving old patterns of previous partners, assume that this person's going to fail me, which led to an argument about him feeling like, I don't appreciate that you think that that's where my mind would go. Mm -hmm. And I would love to know that you can trust me and that mm -hmm. I do have your best interest. And then the situation, which I was depending on to like test him mm -hmm. came along and I can still see my mind being like, okay, he's going to fail us. He's going to fail us. He's going to fail us. Not because of him, but because of the past pattern. Mm -hmm. And then he didn't freaking fail me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I was like, shit, Eleni, it's time to let that one go, mm -hmm. right? And then to even voice it to him, like, by the way, thank you for making it safe for me to trust you, right? And that's even one, like, learning to use language that makes a man feel empowered and make him know that his efforts are being seen and appreciated. You make me feel safe. You mm -hmm. make me feel trusted. You make me feel like I could be myself around you. 
thank you that I can depend on you. Thank you for taking care of me. Like all this vocabulary that I didn't have before. And like, you can see how much it impacts a man. So there's that. And then the other thing is also just how to support a man from a feminine space. Like we've had this conversation or coaches and a lot of our work is to analyze and problem solve and make an action plan. And so for me, it was just kind of like you would, you would share an issue and I'm like, I want to <laughs> like solve your life <laughs> because this is what I do. Right. And I asked you, I said, how can I support a man in a feminine way? And so just stepping on in a lot of that and even um, identifying still where are the areas in which that can stay the same for me so I can feel good. Yeah. Another big one, I think, is sometimes also we have this vision of our partner being so similar to us mm -hmm. in like all the ways. And so the whole work that we did with the partner vision and the three non-negotiables and the three nice to haves, which I'm fortunate to have all six. Mm -hmm. um, that's fun. Yeah, well, that happened, right? <laughs> Um, the other part is, is when we start to get into the nitty gritty, especially with regards to, you know, our work, I think we have such a go getterness in our work and such a specific bubble that in my mind, I'm like, oh, it's normal to manifest a partner who does something quasi similar or entrepreneurial like I do. And he doesn't. And I was like, ooh, well, that's a stretch too. And how can I actually welcome different aspects of who he is and what he does and not make them issues, rather make them compliments? Yes. That was a huge thing that you really helped me understand and shift as well. Mm. Um, and then the last one is just like, you know, consistently choosing every little micro second love over fear. Mm -hmm. is what am I is what I'm about to do stemming from a place of fear or love and if it stems from a place of fear can I make it my job to take care of it and not act on it and then when I've come back to love then that's when I can go forward yeah oh that's so delicious thank you so much for sharing that my pleasure <laughs> mm, I love that so much if there's someone watching this um curious maybe like starting to wonder like should I join should I learn more but there's hesitation for whatever reason because we because fear is strong fear has a strong grip on us what would you say to her I would say that as somebody who's typically calculated and analytical um, to the point where I'd be like, hey, Diana, I want to see the full curriculum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I have that. it. I have it. <laughs> I do, but I'm just, I'm just saying, mm -hmm. I think what has surprised me and taught me, really taught me, which is why I'm so excited to come on in the next cohort so I can also support the ladies in the same way, is that the biggest magic happens where there's no plans right? Um, that's the first thing. The second thing is, is that I think a lot of people might think that their situation is unique, or might be misunderstood, or there's nobody else with with their challenges or their issues mm -hmm. or their problems. And I think there's such a sense of acceptance, love, and camaraderie and sisterhood within the group, that there's no way that you won't feel love and support. Um, and that every single person will serve as a mirror. So it's not only about what you're learning, it's how it can be multiplied by all of the other participants in here. And there's so many learning moments that you would never even anticipate that I think that it's very difficult to put a value sum on the amount of learning and growth and just love, like just the feeling of being in this it's like I think the love that I felt over the last five months with all of you has been such an up leveling in and of itself so it's like even if you're just craving to be in a space mm -hmm. where you're gonna 
be held for all of your messy process or exorcisms as I said (laughs) this is a space for you yes right yeah it's the space for you and what's exciting is that what's coming up is that I do bring I will be bringing a little bit more of the behavioral analytical side right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's like we're going to be sandwiching them Mm -hmm. in this nice feminine masculine yeah this and so yeah it's gonna be a lot of fun I love it it's so good and we keep our groups intimate right so it's like it's just the right amount of support but like you're really seen and we know like the name of the person you're dating or what you're going through and it's it's so delicious no one goes forgotten yeah everybody everybody is valued truly yeah Yeah. Mm -hmm. thank you thank you so much for sharing my pleasure thank you for having me Mm. i'm excited to see who will join us yes same lots of love bye everyone